Hey guys, so I'm here for belate, belate, the belated part 10, I think, of my uh, bookshelf tours. Um, I only have this one and then one more that will be hosted on Friday today uh, until we're done with like the bulk of my books. Uh, after this b particular bookcase that's right here that I'm doing for this tour... Um, all we have left is my reference books, my painting books, and then my non-book things that are on my bookshelves, uh, my DVDs and my music, which I think I will try to go through relatively quickly in another video if anyone would find that interesting. Um, but anyway, we're on nonfiction. We're on our next to last uh, section of nonfiction, so I will, I will just jump right in. We start with uh, "Touched with Fire: Manic Depressive Illness and the Artistic Temperament" by K. Redfield Jameson. The major works of Samuel Johnson, uh, another Oxford World classic. I love, I love Samuel Johnson. He actually almost made it onto my top ten nonfiction books uh, tag um, because I just love. Um, I love his wit. I love his kind of um, completely authentic and incredibly amusing pomposity, you know, like 18th century British pomposity. I love it. This is The Plantagenets, The Warrior Kings and Queens Who Made England by Dan Jones. Hamlet and Oedipus by Ernest Jones, which is the classic study on Hamlet where the author argues that Hamlet wanted to, you know, sleep with Gertrude and, um, secretly wished that he'd been the one to kill his father. <laughs> Man and His Symbols by Carl Jung, which I'm currently reading and brought back for this tour. Letters to Milena by Franz Kafka, uh, a collection of letters between Franz Kafka and his love interest, Milena. Concerning the Spiritual and Art by Vasily Kandinsky. China, a History by uh, John Key. A Reader's Guide to Samuel Beckett by Hugh Kenner. This has been invaluable to me in my explorations of Samuel Beckett's uh, body of work. It really has a lot of really good basic interpretations of a lot of his works, and it's helpful in particular for his fiction, which I tend to find uh, a lot more baffling than his drama. This is a collection of the works of Kierkegaard. It is edited by Robert Brattal. Either or by Soren Kierkegaard. The Ghost in the Machine by Arthur Kessler. Wagner's Ring, Turning the Sky Round, Commentaries on the Ring of the Nibelung by M. Owen Lee. Why I Read, The Serious Pleasure of Books by Wendy Lesser, uh, which is of obvious interest to people on BookTube. I did quite enjoy this. A Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold. A Grief Observed by C.S. Lewis, which uh, is sort of a memoir of his thoughts after the time when his wife died, um, which I think is beautiful. The Ultimate Art Essays Around and About Opera by David Littlejohn. Haven't uh, made my way into any of the essays in this book, but a lot of them look super interesting. The War with Hannibal by Livy. Essay Concerning Human Understanding by John Locke. This is actually only a selection from the book, but I think that's enough because the book, it's, the book in its full length I think is super, super long. Second Treatise of Government and Letter Concerning Toleration by John Locke. On the Sublime by Longinus, a really old uh, work of literary criticism from the ancient world. Uh, Longinus is a anonymous author. No, we don't really know anything about him or her, um, but this is just a one of the foundational works of literary criticism and is actually very, very accessible. The Story of Buddhism by Donald Lopez. The Crusades Through Arab Eyes by Amin Malouf. Christianity, The First 3,000 Years by Diarmid Mikaluk. The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. 1491 New Revelations of the Americas Before Columbus by Charles Mann. Eros and Civilization by Herbert Marcuse. American Epic, The Story of the American Indian by Alice Marriott and Carol Ratchlin. This is not a book I would really ever recommend anyone read for Native American history because it's pretty out of date. It was published, I think, back in the 1970s, and the anthropology in it is just out of date. And I just think that the authors are overly sympathetic to boarding schools, the boarding schools that were used for cultural cultural genocide against Native Americans. Um, but I keep it because 
it belonged to my great-grandmother, basically, and so I feel like I can't just get rid of it for that reason. Uh, the Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. Indian Country by Peter Matheson, which is a book about uh, white people, or the United States in particular, um, desecration of Native American religious sites, uh, which is far too relevant to what's going on right now in a certain place in the United States. Decoding Wagner, An Invitation to His World of Music Drama by Thomas May. The Science of Poetry and the Philosophy of Language by, um, what is the author's name? It's not on the cover. <laughs> um, the author is uh, Hudson Maxim. And we go right from that to another book on poetry, which I have read. I haven't read the, the Maxim book, but I have read this, which is On Poetry by Glenn Maxwell, which is an excellent uh, book, sort of a medita meditation on uh, reading poetry and writing poetry. If uh, you're a fan of poetry, whether you write it or whether you read it but don't write it, uh, I think you would probably love this. And even if you don't really like poetry, this is just a great, great book. Really kind of aphoristic and poetic in its own right. I absolutely love it. What Evolution Is by Ernest Mayer. 1776 by David Mikola. I still remember reading this in high school for my AP U.S. History class, and I really, really loved it. Um, and yeah, so I, I, but I need to reread it really. It's been so long. And, uh, you know, I would love to start learning more about the, um, American Revolution and just early American history in general. I want to read, uh, in particular biographies of George Washington. Interestingly, George Washington does not come out of the, out of this book looking particularly good. <laughs> he kind of, um, David Mikola does a lot to show how kind of flawed and incompetent George Washington could be, and I think that that's kind of important, because I think we do tend to sort of revere him disproportionately in the United States. Essays in Idleness and Hojiki by Kenko and Chome. This is kind of a weird, uh, a weird book. It's a, it's a work of Japanese literature. Um, Essays in Idleness is really just a uh, sort of series of sort of rambling uh, meditations that Kenko wrote that don't really connect to one another, don't really have an overarching theme, or just kind of his, you know, daily thoughts about whatever happened to come into his mind. And they just, you know, explore sort of typical Buddhist themes. There's also a really nice passage about reading and the love of reading in it somewhere. Uh, I have it actually as one of my Facebook quotes, which, you know, I do have Facebook quotes. Um, and then Hojiki is kind of a a little memoir by Chome about him sort of going into onto this hill and just building a hut to live alone for a while, alone in isolation. Um, and I, I like them both. I, I do need to reread them, like so many of the books on this shelf. Battle Cry of Freedom, The Civil War Era by James McPherson, which is his really large uh, Pulitzer Prize winning history of the Civil War, uh, which does qualify as a mammoth, and which I am vaguely considering reading in March for March of the Mammoths. We will see. Nag Hammadi Scriptures, edited by Marvin Meyer. God, a Biography by Jack Miles. Christ, A Crisis in the Life of God by Jack Miles. Religion as We Know It, An Origin Story by Jack Miles. The Way to Rainy Mountain by N. Scott Momaday. Selected Essays by Montaigne. Uh, I have had a hard time connecting with Montaigne. I really just find his essays a little bit tedious and not all that insightful, to be totally honest, and kind of not that fun to read. I hear all this about, like, Montaigne's wit and all these things, and I just don't see it coming through, but this is kind of an old translation. Um, it is a public domain translation because this is a Dover Thrift edition. I think the translation is by um, William Carew Hazlitt, um, who I think was a a, a famed uh, Shakespeare critic in his own day, but um, so it's kind of old, and that might be why I have a hard time connecting with the translation, so I might just need a different translation, but yeah, I, I wouldn't call myself a big fan of Montaigne at this point. Utopia by Thomas More, The Oxford History of the American People by Samuel Eliot Morrison, which again qualifies as a mammoth, but I think I'll save this to read after I've read um, some more about other specific aspects of American history, like the Civil War and like George Washington and other things. Um, I'll save it this to read until I've read about some of those more specific aspects of American history, because I think having a grounding in a lot of those other more 
specific aspects will ha will make a big history like this a bit more palatable. The World of the Shining Prince, Court Life in Ancient Japan by Ivan Morris. Um, so this is all about Heian Japan, which is the sort of um, period in Japan before the rise of the samurai. And it's sort of, I think, in the, like, it's before 1000 AD, but sort of sort of between, like, 700 and 1000 AD, as, as I remember it. Um, and uh, it was a really fascinating time in Japanese history, and I really, really enjoyed this book. It's very readable. And I will say that if you like The Tale of Genji by Murasaki Shikibu, then this would be interesting for you to read, because this was the period when Miss Murasaki Shikibu was alive and writing, and it's also the period in which The Tale of Genji takes place. So if you are a fan of, of Shikibu or her or that book, um then uh then you might find this book this book interesting. I haven't actually read the Tale of Genji, but I've read this and yeah, I've wanted to read the Tale of Genji ever since. He actually uh has a long pa uh, passage where he discusses the Tale of Genji in depth and the kind of weird style it's written in. It's a really interesting part of the book where he talks about the ja how sort of weird the Japanese that uh, the Tale of Genji is written in. I, I, it's, it's a really good book. This next one is a bit weird. So this is uh, Toni Morrison's Nobel Lecture. Um, so it's a tiny thing, and like you can listen to these Nobel Lectures on, uh, on YouTube, but I found this at a used bookstore, so I thought, why not? It's kind of a nice little volume. But yeah, I mean, you can literally read it in an afternoon. Um, so And I really liked this. I thought it was a, a really eloquent, really thought-provoking uh, read. Native American test ugh. Native American testimony, um, a chronicle of Indian white relations from prophecy to pre to the present, uh, fourteen ninety two to two thousand. This is a collection of primary sources uh, by Native Americans about their relations with white people. Um, it's edited by Peter Nabokov and has a foreword by Vine Deloria Jr. Lectures on Don Quixote by Vladimir Nabokov. I don't think he's any relation to uh, Peter Nabokov, but uh, I was not a huge fan of Don Quixote. In fact, I would say that I kind of hated reading it. But I was intrigued by the two main characters, so I imagine I will find this kind of interesting. And he also kind of has a chapter or section by section commentary on Don Quixote which might go some way to make me want to reread it I don't know next up we have uh two volumes of the Wagner operas by Ernest Newman um so the uh so the first volume here which is the purple one is the Flying Dutchman Tannhauser Lohengrin Tristan and Isolde uh and the Master Singers of Nuremberg and the second one is the Nibelung's Ring, the Rheingold, the Valkyrie, Siegfried, Twilight of the Gods, and then Parsifal. Children of Light and the Children of Darkness by Reinhold Niebuhr. And we have The Nature and Destiny of Man, a Christian Interpretation by Reinhold Niebuhr. And this is, looks like a big book, but I actually don't think it qualifies as a mammoth, which really frustrates me, because this is something I'd be very interested in reading, but um, it's obviously huge. And finally, uh, we end out with... The Birth of Tragedy by Friedrich Nietzsche. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you are interested in any of these books, then feel free to ask about them in the comments, and, uh, you know, feel free to comment on anything else I said in the video. Um, but anyway, we will, uh, I will see you guys in only, you know, a couple days for the last uh, uh, part of the, non of the general nonfiction. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.